Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, May 11th, 1115 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at amazing footage from rock climbers up on Mount Merapi yesterday. <laughs> they must have been uh, quite surprised. Look at the fury of this mountain. Look at the amount of ash and dust being ejected into the atmosphere, to say the least. I'll leave you links to this amazing footage. We'll get back to it. Let's get on with the update. Large hail, damaging winds, and isolated tornadoes possible mostly in northern Colorado. Heads up. Severe weather expected in the Mid-Atlantic and Lower Great Lakes on Saturday. The National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center is forecasting enhanced risk of severe weather from parts of Ohio, West Virginia, PA, Maryland, New Jersey, and Delaware on Saturday. Severe thunderstorms which, with damaging winds will be the main threat. And also hail, folks. <laughs> We're going to be talking about that. But some tornadoes are also possible. A slight risk is forecast for a long swath of the Mid-Atlantic Lower Great Lakes stretching from Illinois to D.C., New Jersey to Delaware coasts. We still have high wind warnings. Man, it was blowing all day. Winter storm warnings and watches for these regions in southwestern Montana, western Wyoming, and some parts, isolated parts of Idaho. Heads up. Still snow in the mountains. Flooding of the St. Johns River up in Maine reaches historic levels. Some people haven't been able to reach their house without using a tractor for weeks. And that's not good. The farms are all under that water, folks. I'll leave you links to this article as well as every other one. Clark Fork River in Montana flooding epically. A lot of epic things happening these days. A trailer surrounded by floodwaters from the Clark Fork River. The flood is expected to crest this weekend at 14.1 feet, making it the highest in 100 years. Yep. Big chill, strong winds, record rainfall, cold temperatures. Heads up, Australia. Don't park in that lot. <laughs> That's a boom. Shrinking glaciers, bigger fires, and hotter nights. How climate change is altering California. Well, if you're brain dead, you may believe this graph at a quick glance. 55 to 57. Whew, that's three degrees. I mean, that's two degrees. Look at that. Since 1900, that's a lot. They didn't tell you it was 59 <laughs> up here in 1940, which means it's two degrees cooler since 1940. So it's all how you frame it, folks. And that is about the size of that. Hobart flooding declared catastrophe as wild Tasmanian storm eases and tracks north. More flooding. The Insurance Council of Australia is not too happy. And they've declared a catastrophe. It's probably because they get out of paying some bills. Heavy rain, hail, and floods hit Thessaloniki in Greece. Totally fluxed here. The Greek port city of Thessaloniki on Thursday, May 11th, flooding roads and houses. We have coverage. And we're going to get to it. It's amazing. Boom. Significant flash flooding on the Thessaloniki, Greece this afternoon. This guy is driving in it. <laughs> He's just like, oh gosh, is that a red light? What are people thinking? Driving down this. Well, dumber things have happened. I don't know if this guy made it. Uh, should I make the left? Some people. Record rainfall, strong winds, and cold blast as extreme weather hits parts of Australia. We were just talking about it. Extreme weather events have broken historic rainfall, bringing strong winds and unusually cold conditions to Australia on May 11th. 
Tasmania's capital, Hobart, experienced a record-breaking rainfall, which caused road closures, schools shut down, legal proceedings to halt, and businesses were evacuated. In the 24 hours leading up to 2300 UTC on May 10th, Hobart got its wettest day since 1960, with the icy center and surrounding areas receiving more than 120 millimeters. That's almost five inches of rain. Heads up. Boom. Five inches of icy cold rain. Severe thunderstorms accompanied with large amounts of hail and heavy rain hit parts of Germany. Massive flooding. This was May 10th. Floods damaged homes and roads, leaving parts of the region under 40 inches of water. A once-in-a-century hailstorm reportedly hit Ginfels in the district of Rungraben Hayes. What does that mean? Oh, my God. Boom. That means old ladies are shoveling a foot and a half of hail. That's hot. And they had to even break out the tractor here. Holy hell. <clears throat> you, that is not fake news. That's real news. Al, I thought you said it wasn't going to snow. Oh, that's hell. <laughs> totally fluxed all over the world. North America, South America, Australia, Europe. It doesn't matter. The cosmic rays are coming in from the universe into the planet. The co cosmic ray increase is not emanating from the sun. These are galactic cosmic rays, folks. And the stratospheric radiation includes galactic cosmic rays as well as solar cosmic rays. It's the galactic cosmic rays that are causing the cloud nucleation and they are on the increase and we're seeing record flooding globally, breaking 100-year records consistently, <laughs> daily. Eruption of Hawaii volcano could cause smog, acid rain, and ballistic projectiles. We covered this. They're using terms like cows, refrigerators, school buses. There could be big bombs. David Dubine over at ADAPT 2030 did an excellent video today covering the 1924 eruption and the projectiles and where they're located. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. We'll check out some more quick footage here of Merapi because it's just too good not to look at. That's what three miles straight up into the atmosphere looks like, and that's what a ton of CO2, ash, sulfur dioxide, and steam billowing up and forever because of the cosmic ray increase creating cooling. This is just increasing the albedo, and with volcanoes on the uptick, including Kilauea, about to blow that's not going to happen for 48 hours. We're going to make the prediction tomorrow, but look for a major eruption from Kilauea in 72 hours from now. That's just my general time frame. We're going to be watching it closely, but 72 hours from now, Kilauea will explode. If the lava continues to drop at the rate it is in the main caldera. This is just based on scientific knowledge, historical documentation, and real-time data. We now know exactly what's going to happen, and we can predict that it will happen in three days. So if you're in the region of Kilauea, try to get yourself out of harm's way. Don't be there in three days. Anywhere within five miles of that caldera, because you may get hit with a bus. That's a heads up. And that's what it'll look like. Seismic update. We have a 5.1 in Lupan, Philippines. We had a 5.1 in Sumalaki, Indonesia. The earthquakes are not stopping in Hawaii. We'll get a blow up on that quickly. But we have a mainland 5.1 in Nomachi, Japan. There are no reports coming in. This is only happening two hours ago. There has been a huge uptick in the Klondike area. We have the Mid-Ocean Ridge rattling at 5.1. There was a Chilean quake at 5.0 up here in Peru, north of Chile, and a small quake here in the San Andreas with a slight uptick, 2.6 in Idlewild, 2.5 in Pinnacles, and 2.6 in Hollister. Now let's come take a look at the seismic activity on, the, the, on Pele here. 
And you can see there's a major uptick here at the Pu'a'a crater area. And here is the fissure zone. So this is the Leilani Estates Rift, and it begins here, and you can even see it the linear feature here. So a rift is a crack, a fissure, a crack, which is why these all these eruptions are emanating out of these cracks. You can see lava flows here. This entire region of the Hawaiian island here, the big island, is has completely experienced lava flow within the last 1,000 years. Why they put homes here is anyone's guess. Absolutely ludicrous. Whatever planner is responsible for that is an idiot, and you should be suing him because there is a 100% probability that your houses will be covered in lava as they are now. And the bad news is that this activity is moving to the northeast. This is where the geothermal plant is and that pentane, which is about to blow. And it appears that there's something happening right here that's going to be big news, which is right by that plant. So there's going to be a new fissure. It's number 17, 18, 19, 20 opening up while the main caldera blows. And there are going to be boulders all in this region. So I hope there are no people returning to their homes in this area. Get out. The sulfur dioxide levels are toxic. Not only are you burning your lungs and shortening your life, you're just living in fear. This is nonsense. Go to the north and spend a month up here. Go look at some places you've never seen. And that's a heads up. <laughs> May 11th, 2018, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is closed until further notice. That means forever, folks. It's probably not going to open anytime soon, meaning this year, next year. Area closures, advisories, drone, unmanned aircraft, and other policies. You can come check it out here. Due to the ongoing seismic activity, anticipated explosions caused by large rock falls, the interaction of groundwater and lava, which is going to occur in 72 hours, and the possibility of an ensuing ashfall event in three days. The Kilauea portion of the park is closed Friday today, May 11th, and will continue until it explodes. And then it will be off limits. Here's the closed area. It's massive. And up here is where the new rifts are going to be happening. So, massive amount of the island closed. Do not go there unless you're an idiot. Check out the ice, folks. <coughs> we are turning up in the last few days here. We're about to pass 2014 levels. We're well up into the multi-decadal average about to hit baseline here, standard deviation at the center. So what we're doing is we've just reversed the time frame. We've went from minimum ice in the last few years, and we're now back. We've increased up to over 15 years of ice. So the ice is extremely thick. We're back into normal range, but it's going to go into abnormal high range within the next six weeks. And that will be the changeover towards the beginning of the next glaciation. So this should cross 2014 and then the baseline within the next six weeks. We're going to be watching it closely because my last prediction I said was going to cross green in two weeks happen in five days. So this might quickly accelerate laterally here across red and be over and to the right of the baseline which means we are in record high ice volume territory at that point. We won't know for one month or a month and a half. So as we are talking, the, the ice volume is turning back up. It has been at, at or above the multi-decadal average for a month and a half and is now going back up, folks. And that's the truth. It has nothing to do with global warming. It has everything to do with the sun. The K7R8 solar update is in. I want you to read it in full. Amazing information coming out here. Solar flux dropped from 69.3 to 68.3. It's going to continue to drop to 2020. And unfortunately, a new paper coming out here using extreme value theory for determining the probability of Carrington-like solar flares is telling us that we are in about a 60-year drought for a Carrington event, which means that any day the grid will fry. And there's your proof coming from the mainstream. 
It's also saying that we are not going to hit solar minimum until at least two years from now. So we have a long, long journey deep into a cooling hole where weather events are going to be catastrophic and epic on a daily basis, and we're going to be covering them. Read up on the extreme value theory for determining the probability of Carrington-like solar flares. Share it with a friend. Get a Faraday cage and learn how to protect yourself because we will have a window, 12 hours maybe, to protect ourselves. Now, the next grand solar minimum, cosmic rays and earth changes, an introduction coming from Sasha Dobler. In abrupt earth changes, we shared this two months ago when he put this out in January, yes, 14th here. I want you all to revisit this. All our new subscribers since that time, it's over 5,000 of you. This is the primer for the information you need about the coming times. There are many others, but this is one of them. It gives you the science behind solar max and minimum, increased cosmic ray flux and what that means to the planet, what that means to human health. And what that means based on <coughs> the historical information that we have on this time period. He also throws in some more interesting uh, theories in here. So there's a lot of good information in here, and I'm going to leave you links to it. Have you heard that Oppenheimer Ranch is giving you 20% off all hemp lucid products, and we have our own dedicated website just for you? I'm going to leave you links to the new website, Oppenheimer Ranch Hemp Lucid. Cheapest price you can get anywhere in the world. Free shipping, and they have new products. Kalki, for all you professional athletes that don't want to get a hot urine, boom. You get 20% off Isoterp CBD, whole plant CBD, and all of the new products. And guess what? Roxy Labs is going to have pet products coming in a month or so. Boom! So your pet doesn't have to feel pain. So come check out Hemp Lucid. Give them a big support. These guys are awesome. They're friends of the channel. They're suspicious observers. And they're going to be out here this summer if they ever uh, make a plan, for gosh sakes. So a lot of you are writing in saying how this has changed your lives. Those of you that are skeptical, you don't have anything to lose here. You get the cheapest price in the world on CBD products here through Hemp Lucid, the only uh, full plant ex uh, extract like this. I mean, this is the, the best plant medicine you can get that's coming from Colorado. <clears throat> and more importantly, there are people that are like-minded. So if you want to support them, you want to support the channel, support Hemp Lucid, you want to support your health, your family, try it. For 30, 40 bucks, you can get a product that could change your life. <laughs> I'm not making it up, folks. I'm telling you the truth. There are millions of people that are now benefiting from CBD. And you should too. Now, unfortunately, this amazing quote from Nikola Tesla, there's no conflict between the idea of religion and the idea of science. But science is opposed to theological dogmas because science is founded in fact. Now, unfortunately, Nicola, that is no longer true. Times are changing. The narrative is controlled by the few elites that are running the show. You're not involved. You're simply a pawn on the risk board. The time is now to start preparing for the changes in the future. They're going to be forever. We're going back into the Stone Age shortly. I don't know how they're going to cover it or how they're going to explain it, but if you're in a major city, you may be stuck. So get a bug out plan. Find a group. Find like-minded people. There are groups like the Oppenheimer Ranch, prepping groups all over, popping up because... Many of us have taken the red pill over a decade ago, and we've been working towards this new future for a while. The quickening is happening faster than ever. It is foretold in many different narratives, including the Hopi legend. Be a rainbow warrior. Join us. Subscribe to the channel. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe.
We love you.